you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Welcome to the demonstration series for the Ruckus Smart Zone controller based on a high scale deployment of version 5.2 release. The videos in this series will show you the basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this video, I'll provide an example of how to configure a URL filtering policy and apply it to a wireless LAN. So let's get started. First, we'll log into a high scale instance of the Virtual Smart Zone controller. Once logged in, you can see that this instance is running version 5.2.0.0.699, or simply referred to as 5.2. Before we get into URL filtering configuration, it must be noted that unlike other firewall policies, URL filtering requires a license to be installed on the Smart Zone controller to operate. The specific license requirements will not be covered in this demo, but please be aware that this feature requires licensing on the Smart Zone controller. URL filtering policies are configured under Firewall, which when clicked, drops down a few submenus. The one we want is URL filtering. You'll first be brought to the Summary tab where application data related to URL filtering will be displayed. We don't currently have any URL filters deployed, so there's nothing here currently. But to configure new URL filter policy profiles, you must go to the Profiles tab. Any configured URL filtering profiles will be displayed here. And as with most policies, URL filtering policies can be applied at the system level or at the partner domain level. New URL filtering policies are defined by clicking on the Create button. The first thing you'll need to enter here is a name, as well as an optional description. In this example, I'll create a policy to be applied to a student wireless LAN, so I'll call it Student URL Filtering Policy. There are three configurable areas of a URL filtering policy. They are blocked categories, blacklist and whitelist, and safe search. We'll explore each of these in this demonstration. The block categories section allows you to filter certain types of sites based on a category type. There are four predefined category groups, as well as a custom option that allows you to specify which content to block. As you click on each category grouping, you'll notice the categories are checked in the currently non-editable blocked category section. Each level down includes the categories of the grouping above it, plus more. If we stop at Strict, then click on Custom, we see all the categories included with the Strict grouping are checked. If we want to filter more categories, we can check them, for instance, Legal Sites. Or we can uncheck items we want to allow, so we'll uncheck Music and Shopping. The Blacklist and Whitelist section lets you define specific domains to be blocked or allowed. This will filter anything within the defined domain. For example, we could put a site that offers term papers for students to plagiarize. We could block that by putting the domain on the blacklist. So let's go ahead and block plagiaristtermpapers.com on the blacklist and click Add to put it in the list. I'll add one more, star.cheaterstar.com, to show how multiple domains can be added to the blacklist. Notice that two asterisks were used in that last entry. You're allowed one wildcard asterisk at the beginning or at the end of the URL and one in the middle. Alternatively, there could be sites you want to ensure students can always get to. These sites would get placed into the whitelist. Again, we simply enter a domain name. We'll go with schoollibrary.edu and click Add. Items in both the blacklist or the whitelist can be deleted by selecting the item and clicking the Delete button. Lastly, we have Safe Search. Safe Search, when enabled, redirects Google searches, YouTube searches, and Bing searches to a virtual IP address that ensures users cannot search for potentially unsafe content. As you click on each of these services, the virtual IP or VIP is displayed. These fields are editable, but are populated by default with the well-known VIP for each service. But you should always mouse over the question mark icon and ping the URL presented. The resolved IP address ensures you have the most current VIP for the service. Once we've completed the blocked categories, blacklist and whitelist, and safe search sections, we can save the URL filtering policy profile by clicking OK. Next, we'll apply the policy to a wireless LAN. We'll head over to Wireless LANs, and I'll select the student WLAN I have already configured. Click the Configure button to open the WLAN configuration window, and scroll down to the Firewall Options section. By default, wireless LANs have a system default firewall profile applied, which does not filter any traffic. In order to apply a single policy to a wireless LAN, you must toggle the Enable WLAN Specific switch to On. 
This allows you to select a policy from a dropdown. Additionally, clicking on a plus button allows you to define a new policy, which is the same process we just went through. But for us to apply our new policy, we'll select it from the URL filtering dropdown. Now before we save this wireless LAN configuration, another setting must be modified or verified. You see, in order for a URL filtering policy to function, the URL filtering policy toggle switch must be set to on. While the dropdown defines the policy rules, this toggle switch is what actually enables the URL filtering process. Once enabled, we can click OK and apply the policy to the wireless LAN. If you select the wireless LAN and scroll down to the firewall options section, you'll see the policy applied as well as the enabled status of the URL filtering setting. This concludes the demonstration on configuring a URL filtering policy on a high scale smart zone controller running release 5.2. Thanks for taking the time to view this demonstration. Thank you.